back. So I've been talking to a lot of people lately and I've learned something about myself. That is that I should be dead. Let me explain. So we were all sharing stories recently and I realized that I've had way more near-death experiences than anybody should possibly survive. I have more lives than like cats. So I'm going to condense them into my favorite most life threatening ones and share them with you today. The first time I should have died was when I was in I believe first grade, maybe younger, and I had to get my tonsils out. Literally every child pretty much has this procedure. I went in and the surgery seemingly went great. I woke up, everybody was treating me like a princess, and I said, this is great. I could get my tonsils out every day. So finally I get to go home from the hospital. I go to bed and I wake up because my mouth starts to taste like metal. It's blood. So I stand up, I don't open my mouth. You have to imagine also, I have this really long dark hair because my hair has not changed since I was five. And I'm wearing this really long white summer nightgown. I'm looking like the ring. And I walk into my parents' room, I knock on the door, I open my mouth to say, mom. And as I say mom, blood just gushes all the way down the front of my dress. Now this isn't funny because I should be dead, but it is funny because if you think about it, I'm like this little kid, I probably scared the shit out of my mom and my dad. They probably thought they were in a horror movie or had some terrible bad dream, some type of sixth sense shit. So my mom puts me in the car. I remember she gave me a purple Kool-Aid pitcher and I'm just spitting blood into this pitcher. We get to the hospital, they rush me back into surgery, they stitch me up and everything's okay. I wake up from the second surgery, I get sent back home, I go to sleep, I wake up, I look around me and the entire mattress and blankets are soaked in a puddle of blood. So again, she puts me in the car, she takes me to the hospital and this time it's like tragic. I remember I remember them immediately taking me in, hooking me up to all types of wires, putting an oxygen mask on me, and then switching me to anesthesia and putting me to sleep. They put me in this big oxygen tent. I thought this was so funny, and my mom did not at all, but she's crying hysterically, punching the doctor, literally beating the shit out of the doctor. And my dad comes over and he grabs her and she grabs my hand. We're like holding hands and they pull the cart away from her because I have to go into surgery. And I remember thinking, this is like a movie. I've seen this in a movie. I got up in my oxygen tent, ripped off my anesthesia mask in the most dramatic way I possibly could, turned around and went, mom, I'll be back. <laughs> She just starts sobbing. I thought it was really funny. So I go through surgery and everything, and I lay in the bed. I can hear people's voices. And I started listening to what they were actually saying in bed, and they were talking about how I had to get my stomach pumped, and how I flatlined, and how they almost lost me, and there should be a lawsuit, and all this stuff. So I waited until they were done talking, and then I like slowly kind of went, Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> that I was awake and I am alive. So that was my first near-death experience. I thought it was pretty cool, really shaped me as the person I am today. My second one was apparently I am like deathly allergic to bees. Not just like a little allergic, like if I get stung by a bee, I'll die within like five minutes allergic to bees. So the first time I found this out was I got stung by a bee, obviously. I noticed my throat starts to get really tight. We drive to the hospital, I can't breathe, and I'm like getting kind of dizzy. And they hook me up and they like give me this shot and it was crazy. Then the doctor comes in and he says, yes, you're allergic to bees. And he says, it's not that big a deal. It's really manageable. Here's this EpiPen. You have to carry this around wherever you go. I was like, really? For the rest of the summer, my mom makes me wear a fanny pack with an EpiPen in it. Now, I already wasn't that cool. Like, I was like kind of chubby. My voice was kind of weird and I said weird things. So the fact that I was now wearing a fanny pack all the time, it just wasn't cool. Like, I'm like at the pool and I have a swimsuit and I have a fucking fanny pack. <laughs> That's probably like a year later. And I am really excited because my sister has her friends coming over. My sister's older than me. And I thought her friends were so cool. And I always wanted to hang out with her and her friends and she's having a sleepover so finally it's my chance to be like kind of a grown up and hang out with the big kids. The sleepover went great. I woke up the next morning and I walked the dog. As I'm walking the dog, this bee flies up my shirt and stings me in the back and I'm like, Great. So I go in and I try to be really discreet about it because I don't want to draw a big scene to the fact that I need this EpiPen. I don't know if you guys know how you have to take an EpiPen, but you have to stab it into your thigh. So I go in and I say, Mom, don't freak out, but I got stung by a bee. She freaks out. She grabs the EpiPen in front of the entire slumber party, pulls down my pants, stabs me in the leg, and starts screaming, call 911. My third experience with bees. Yes, it gets worse. I'm with my cousin. 
and he has a lot of really hot guy friends and again they're older and we all go bike riding there was this big swampy thing and they all decide to ride through it I didn't want to because I thought there might be bees in there but I did it anyways because girls do dumb things for boys and vice versa so they all ride through and it's fine and I ride through this marsh and of course I get attacked by a hive of bees and they were black I don't even know what kind of bees they were it stung me I kid you not right in my ass cheek so I have two options here I can either Either draw attention to the fact that I just got stung in the ass or I can die I did choose death for a solid 30 seconds but then I realized okay I should probably say something so I said hey RJ I got stung by a bee I think I need to go home he panics leaves my bike picks me up puts me on his handlebars and rides me home to my aunt's house so yeah me and bees we don't get along. Now I have one final story for you and this one is by far my craziest, coolest story in my life. I didn't start driving until I was 18 years old. Right after I got my driver's license, I went to college. So I didn't really have a whole lot of driving experience and I'm a really bad driver still, but at this point I was really, really bad. So I'm at home. It was my first summer after college. I was just bored out of my mind. So I had this plan that I was gonna drive from Pittsburgh to West Virginia to pick up my best friend and then I was gonna drive to Washington DC to stay with my other best friend. I walked downstairs and I really casually tell my parents, hey, I'm gonna drive to Washington DC tomorrow. And they said, no the fuck you're not. And my mom and dad both said, if you leave, you will get in a car accident and you will be too far away for us to help you. And of course me, being an arrogant little 18 year old bitch, I said, eh, whatever, yeah, I'm going. I get on the road with my little map quest directions. I'm feeling good and I made it really far and I made it to West Virginia and I picked up my best friend and that was great. And then I'm on my way to DC. Now it was an eight hour trip. We were on like seven hours and 45 minutes. We were like 15 minutes away from the destination. All of a sudden I'm driving and it's just starting to get dark and this car, I must've been in their blind spot, just kind of swerves into me and I'm like, Oh shit! Being the inexperienced driver that I am, I jerked my wheel to the right and I swerved and I hit gravel. Then after I hit the gravel, I was like, damn it, I'm going to die. Then I swerved back into the street. At that point, I was going to hit another car. Again, I'm faced with a choice. I can either go into the street and probably hit another car or I can drive over the cliff. So I swerve into the gravel again. I spin out about 10 times on the freeway. Then I fly over the cliff, I break the guardrail, and I have a solid a 900 foot airborne drop. I'm just sliding down this hill and I'm a really bad driver so I don't know how to use my brakes. Finally my best friend says to me, hit your fucking brakes you fucking moron. And I say, oh okay that sounds like a great idea. We come to a grinding halt and then we land in a ravine. So I'm in this ravine, my radiator explodes, my airbag had deployed, the powders from the airbag are all in our faces and we can't breathe and we can't see anything and I was just going like this the whole time and then my radiator explodes in our faces and we're like okay toxic gas in the car time to get out of the vehicle I try to open my door and for some reason my door doesn't open because of a safety feature that when you get an accident your door doesn't open so then Whitney she's from West Virginia she doesn't fuck around she takes her foot she's wearing flip-flops and she busts the door open literally just busts the window open it shatters and she's bleeding like gushing blood all the way up her leg then she comes over and she's about to kick mine open and then I just kind of look at her like this as I roll down the window she didn't think about that one. I roll down the window and I climb out. The next step is to literally climb this mountain. I'm literally for dear life like climbing this mountain. So when we get to the top, apparently when you drive over a cliff, somebody calls the ambulance. Oh, and also we made the news. Two girls drive over a cliff in Frederick County, Maryland. That was my first brush with fame. Ever since that moment, I knew I just wanted to be on TV. So then the cop comes up and he hands me my phone. He says, this has been ringing off the hook. You should call whoever it is back. They're probably worried about you. It was my mom. She was calling me incessantly because she knew I was gonna get into an accident because moms know these things. So I take a breath and I say, okay, I need to call my mom back. And I call her and my voice is kind of shaking and I say, mom? And she went off on me. You got into an accident, didn't you? I knew it. I told you not to go. So I started sobbing. I hang up the phone because my mom just yelled at me. I'm like, I should be dead over here. And then uh, my dad calls me back because I wouldn't answer my mom's calls. And he goes, Gabrielle, your mom's just really upset. <laughs> She was really scared and worried about you. I mean, it's kind of a cool story. If you look down at where the path my car took, it was such a zigzag. We literally missed every single tree. My car didn't flip. Neither of us were really hurt. Overall, it was like a huge blessing. And it was actually really amazing that we came out unscathed. Is unscathed the word? 
have no idea. If unscathed isn't a word, feel free to correct me. If you have any near-death experiences, please leave them in the comments below. Thanks for tuning in this week. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'm linking my Vine, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, all beneath. If you want to check those out, that'd be great.